What I'd like to do for purposes of the meeting is just state an intro because obviously this is our very first meeting in which we are conducting it um, virtually. So I just wanted to make a brief statement and then just make a couple uh, just uh, brief comments about uh, the, uh, the process that, that will follow. Uh, so given the unprecedented circumstances resulting from the global pandemic, uh, Governor Baker issued an order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law to protect the health, safety uh, and of individuals interested in attending public meetings. In keeping with that order, the committee will convene this meeting using remote collaboration technology. There are three considerations that I'd like to note before we begin. First of all, uh, all votes will have to be taken by roll call. So I will ask each member uh, to register their vote, if any, individually for taking them today. Uh, secondly, I'll ask that everybody except the committee members to please mute themselves to help keep the background noise down to a minimum. Uh, third, uh, just as a notice to everyone that this meeting is being recorded, uh, is there anyone else that is present and online that is recording this meeting by other means? And if not, otherwise the meeting will proceed in its ordinary course. Uh, and then for the members of the public who are uh, listening in, uh, and participating. Uh, I just want to state that for purposes of today, we will not be taking public comments from the uh, public. Uh, I believe as part of our discussion today, um, there may be a date and time which we will state at a later date um, in which we will accept uh, public comments. Okay. Um, at this time, what I'd like to do is just call upon each of the respective members um, to announce who is here and who they um, represent, uh, and then as well as the um, members of the uh, Gaming Commission staff who are also uh, present as well. Okay. Um, Mr. Savage, would you like to start? Yeah, hi, it's, it's Joe Savage. I'm uh, the representative of the Thoroughbred Horsemen and Breeders. Okay. Well, Commissioner I'll jump, Cameron. I'll jump in next. This is uh, Gail yep. Cameron, uh, Commissioner with the Gaming Commission, representing the Gaming Commission on this committee. Okay. I'm Peter Goldberg, and I represent the Standard Bird Industry, the Horseman Association, as well as the breeders. Okay. Hi, and I'm Emily Katonic. I'm from the Treasurer's Office. And I'm Brian Fitzgerald, uh, chair of the, the committee. So uh, the next item that is on the agenda, I'd like to um, go over uh, the approval of the minutes of our last meeting from February 19th, 2020. Uh, and thank you, Shara, for uh, sending those out to the committee members. I just asked the uh, committee members if they've had an opportunity to review those minutes and if they have any uh, comments or changes that need to be made to the minutes. I, I reviewed them, Don't didn't see any changes. I, I also reviewed and um, do not have changes. Okay. Same. Okay, all right. I, I'm uh, I, to accept the minutes if you want a motion. Okay, yeah, I was gonna yeah, ask for a motion to accept the minutes. Second. Okay. Uh, and then so because we have to vote in a roll call vote, uh, so what I'll do is I'll announce the name. Uh, Ms. Katenek? Yes. Mr. Goldberg? Yes. Mr. Savage? Yes. Commissioner Cameron? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Okay, all right. So um, we'll accept the minutes and they're, they're um, accepted and voted upon. Uh, all right. So moving on to the next item on the agenda, which is item number three. Um, as you recall at the last meeting, uh, there were uh, two legal questions uh, that were presented to us 
Um, um, and one of them was involving, uh, I believe in accordance with the, what was stated in the minutes, um, Mr. Goldberg had um, proposed the idea of uh, funds being distributed to um, one industry towards the, the standard breads um, and whether or not there would be an opportunity uh, for any sort of um, a side agreement um, with the um, thoroughbreds in terms of a distribution. So what I wanted to do is I know that um, our legal counsel has reviewed uh, both of these issues and I wanted to start with that one at first. Um, Mr. Grossman is, is here and I'd ask that um, uh, he at least um, provide some comments in terms of what he's found out with respect to that particular issue. Thank you. Uh, good morning. The, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I have had a chance to look at that question. Um, and I've also had a chance to consider it in the context of the open meeting law. Uh, there was some question as to whether the open meeting law was uh, at, it, at play here, too. So I thought I would just provide an overview of that question uh, in the grand context of the law as well. So there is certainly no reason two members of the committee can't discuss the split or anything else for that matter outside of a public meeting. Uh, the open meeting law is in chapter 30A and simply prohibits a quorum of a public body from deliberating over a matter within its jurisdiction outside of a public meeting. In the case of the committee, the quorum of course means three members. So any agreements in principle or what have you reached between two members privately would have to be presented to the other committee members in a public meeting and approved by a majority in order to actually be adopted. It would also be important that in that type of scenario that those two members not just go out and discuss any such agreement with other committee members outside of the public meeting in that that could be considered uh, what is known as a serial communication, which is essentially just an effort to make uh, an end run around the quorum provisions of the open meeting law. So I know there was a specific question as to whether one association could essentially agree to give the other breeds certain monies received from the fund via a privately negotiated agreement between the two. In my opinion, such an agreement would be impermissible. Section 60 of Chapter 23K, which we'll get into in a little more detail momentarily, is clear as to how monies from the fund have to be distributed and spent. And we'll again go through that uh, momentarily as well. Any effort to subvert that, uh, those distribution percentages, the associated intended use of the funds, and or the role of the committee in making the recommendations uh, and ultimately the commission's determination as to where the monies uh, should be spent is impermissible in my opinion. There is however nothing generally preventing one association from giving uh, private monies it received in some other way other than from the uh, horse uh, race development fund to another association as long as it's not fund monies that are being used and as long as it's not related to some agreement to vote in a certain way that uh, members had reached uh, privately. So as a general matter, those are, those are my thoughts as to the use of private agreements um, in this context. I would generally suggest that it's not uh, permitted uh, here. I'm, that, that's a, a broad overview. I'm happy to take any questions if there are specific provisions of the law or, or other details that we'd like to uh, discuss. I think it was very clear, uh, Mr. Grossman, and I thank you for doing that research on our behalf. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grossman. Are there any other questions? Are there any questions? further related to that particular uh, issue? No. Seeing none, okay, all right. Um, so uh, we'll kind of start to now discuss the other legal uh, question that was presented 
Uh, and if the members will recall, um, there was some discussion at the last meeting as to um, whether or not um, it would be legally permissible or possible um, to address the issue of the respective splits between the categories for which the horse race development funds are allocated. Uh, and as you know, with the three categories, with 80% of the fund going towards purses, 16% going towards breeding programs, and 4% of those funds going towards health and welfare benefits. Um, you know, the current split as of today is a 65-35 uh, split between the standard breads and the thoroughbreds. And so the proposed legal question was whether or not each of those three individual categories could be um, broken down with respect to um, uh, a different distribution um, or different percentages that could be distributed within each of those separate categories. Uh, so I know that um, Mr. Grossman has had a, a, an opportunity to um, review that. Uh, and I know that, um, so um, Mr. Grossman, I guess I would just say, uh, you know, do you want to just kind of elaborate a little bit more on what you found with respect to that um, proposed type of um, potential um, to see if there's any flexibility with respect to uh, the distribution between those three three categories. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd be happy to do that. I did have a chance to take a look at the proposal. Um, and if everyone is clear as to what the proposal is, um, we can move into whether it is legally permissible. Um, obviously, the, the first place to start is by looking at Chapter 23K, which Section 60, which is where the Racehorse Development Fund was established. And that section, of course, also established this committee. Um, and the statute provides, there are two places in particular that I think it's important to take a look at when reviewing this proposal. First, there's language in paragraph B that says, the horse racing committee shall make recommendations on how the funds received shall be distributed between thoroughbred and standard bred racing facilities to support the thoroughbred and standard bred horse racing industries under this section. And then in paragraph C, the statute provides that funds received from the Racehorse Development Fund shall be distributed between thoroughbred and standard bred accounts as approved by the commission as follows. And then it goes into the three well-known uh, percentages. Notably, there's no language in section 60 that mandates the present process of determining the distribution percentage or the split uh, between the breeds first. Uh, the proposal before the committee that the split be determined by each of the three categories is entirely lawful, in my opinion, and just as valid an approach as doing it the present way. Um, it just so happens that it was done the other way first. Uh, but there is nothing uh, in the language of the statute or otherwise that precludes uh, moving forward with the present proposal. The only caveat to what I just said being that the Gaming Commission has Hello, adopted. Todd? Yeah. Hello, Todd. Sorry, this is Tanya. I'm taking minutes. And could you just repeat that last thing you said um, about the proposal? I'm so sorry. The audio is kind of fuzzy. Sure. Uh, I, I was just saying that there is nothing in the statute that prohibits uh, the committee from moving forward with the present proposal, uh, and that it's just as lawful and valid an approach as the present way of doing it. The only caveat, as I was just uh, saying to, what, to that being, that the Gaming Commission has adopted regulations that are located at 205 CMR 149.04 
that seem to mandate that the split be performed the way it is presently performed. So if the committee elects to pursue this new process under the new proposal, we would have to bring the matter before the Gaming Commission uh, to determine whether the commission is amenable to amending the regulations. And they do have the ability to do that. Um, but before we go and do that, it seemed to me prudent to see whether the committee um, is interested in pursuing uh, that new approach. But otherwise, there is nothing to uh, suggest that you can't move forward with the proposal. So, uh, question, uh, Mr. Grossman. Um, so what you're saying is rather than the 80% uh, to purses, the 16% and the 4% to breeding, uh, 16 and the four to health and welfare uh, being taken as one um, split decision that we could, if we choose to, as a committee, decide each of those categories individually. Is, is, I think that's what I'm hearing. That's right, Commissioner Cameron. And um, as, as Brian said, um, it, it maybe it would be helpful if I just kind of run through again what the proposal is so everyone is clear on that point. Brian ran through it before, and I know you talked about it a little bit, but of course, if you're going to move forward with something like this, it's important that everyone be on the same page as to what the proposal actually is. So if I may, uh, Mr. Chair and committee members, I'll, I'll just quickly run through the proposal as I understand it, and we can make sure we're all, we're all talking about the same thing. Um, but essentially, um, as everyone is aware, of course, Section 60 requires that the fund be distributed between the breeds to the tune of 80% going to fund purses for live races, 16% to breeding programs, and 4% to fund health and pension benefits for members of the horsemen's organizations. Instead of first determining the distribution percentage, which is what the statute calls it, we call it the split, but the statute refers to it as the distribution percentage. Um, and then breaking the monies up into those three categories, uh, the proposal is that the monies be split into the three categories first in accordance with the statutory percentages, 80, 16, and four, and then have the committee determine by category the recommendations for the distributions to each breed from there. So there could be a different split percentage for the purse monies than for the, the breeders' monies than for the health and pension uh, benefits. There could be different percentages for each of those. Ultimately though, the same total amount of money would go from the fund to each of those three categories as the statute initially envisioned and still says has to happen. So it's the same amount of money that would go to purses and to the breeders. It would just perhaps be divvied up a little bit differently. If adopted, the, the new proposal would in theory afford the committee and ultimately the gaming commission a greater ability to specifically direct the funds into the three categories with a bit more precision, depending upon need and other associated factors as determined by uh, this committee. So that's what we're talking about doing is essentially just determining the split for each of the three categories instead of just determining one big split and letting the money flow according to the statutory categories. Um, I, I hope that offers some clarity, uh, commissioner and committee members. Uh, it does. I think that's what we're talking about. Thank you, thank you. Are there uh, any questions that the other committee members have regarding that proposed consideration? I guess, I guess my, only, my only question would be, and I, I probably know the answer, is uh, Mr. Grossman, you, you talk about obviously having to go to the Gaming Commission and getting the regulations changed. Um, and maybe this question is addressed to Commissioner Cameron as well as Mr. Grossman. Um, that process would take approximately how long, assuming that it was, you know, approved, assuming that it, it, the commission approved a change in, in how the regulations, how it was applied to the statute. Uh, what, what's the timing mechanism of, of a change like that? 
Well, Commissioner Cameron, I'd be happy to field that question yeah, if do, that'd be helpful. I know there are two different ways, and I right. is an emergency reg and the normal process. So why don't you explain that, Mr. Grossman? That that's exactly uh, what I was going to say as well. Um, Generally, I tell people it takes between 60 to 90 days if, if we're running a real tight uh, filing program, which we generally do through uh, Ms. Bedard, um, to get a regulation from beginning to end. Of course, it has to be, there has to be public comment period. It has to go through the Secretary of State's office, and there are a number of filings. It has to be published in an, um, a document called the Massachusetts Register. So it does take two to three months to get it uh, from beginning to end. But as uh, Commissioner Cameron mentioned, depending upon the nature of the situation, we do have the ability uh, to request that the commission take emergency action, in which case changes can be made immediately. Um, so that is on the table, depending upon how this all shakes out as well and how the commission feels about the urgency of the situation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Do any other committee members have any other any other questions for their discussion? On I'm wondering why it, it, what, or have we selected that the order is that we would request this and then the commission would would change the law or should it be in the other order the commission changes the law and then we decide what we want to do well, commissioner cameron i'd be happy to to field this one as well if that would be helpful yes um so the commission has regulations that basically say that the split should be done the way it's presently done um, they were put in place i think just as a reference uh, but it's really, at least up to, in my opinion, up to the committee in the first instance to figure out what the split should be. Um, it, because there's a whole process, as we just dis discussed, that we would have to go through to change the regulations uh, with the commission, it, it seems to make more sense to me to first figure out whether the committee is interested in doing this before going through that whole process and changing the regulations. Um, we can actually even consider moving them simultaneously if no final decision is made here today, but there is an interest in pursuing that. Um, I know there are a number of commissioners on this call listening in. Um, of course, Commissioner Cameron is here as well. So, um, you know, we can kind of work hand in glove on this, this thing. I don't see it as um, an insurmountable hurdle in any event, but it is just something I wanted to make sure the committee members were aware of. Um, that we would have to to address. Yeah, and, and if I may add to that, uh, thank you, Mr. Grossman. That is a good uh, summation of of the process. Um, I, I just think former committee members. Uh, this was just never com contemplated before. It's not that the commission felt strongly about that being the regulation. It just it just seemed to follow suit with the way the committee was working. And uh, looking at the split differently for the three categories was just never con contemplated. And I think Mr. Goldberg can speak to that. It's, it's not a decision that was made by the committee. We just um, started working along those lines, not thinking that there was another alternative. Yeah, I, I, I would confirm that com completely. There was, it was never even a, a, a thought mentioned at any meeting back from 2012, uh, it was, our, our decision was do a split, then have it applied for the statute, so, yeah. Do any other uh, members have any, any thoughts about the, uh, the you know, the, the, the proposed um, consideration of, of addressing whether or not we could um, move forward with having that flexibility in terms of considering the split? Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I think our next topic would help me make an informed decision. Um, okay. 
you know, what the public thinks about this as an alternative. I know in the limited, um, you know, as a committee or as a commission, we're always open to taking comments. We just haven't asked for public comments yet with regard to this. But we did receive yeah. a couple already, as I'm sure the committee members noted. And there seems to be differing opinions, um, not only between the breeds, but within um, a certain breed. So it, it really is, um, I know I think I need more information before considering if this is an appropriate idea for us. So, um, and I know that's our next topic. Okay, all right, okay, all right. So then dis discussing that, I know that we were kind of, uh, we basically would be looking at, um, you know, in essence, the, 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 the criteria for the revised um, split calculation. So, uh, do we need to have any further comments in terms of, uh, you know, does any committee members have any um, specific comments with respect to criteria for making that consideration? Well, I, I know I haven't had a full opportunity to consider that and would also very much like to hear from other committee members. So I don't think um, yeah. we're in a pos position to do that today. Um, back in October, back October of 2014, this committee adopted 15 criteria in addition to the five statutory criteria. Um, right. And when I review the 15, uh, part of me is like, I don't see a lot of these being necessarily applicable to each category. And the 15 may not be adequate if we're going to now decide category by category. So I think that's a, a process that, that um, uh, needs some thought. I mean, you know, to, to me, from an overarching um, level, if we're going to change this to a, a category by category approach, I think it gives the committee an opportunity to, to kind of step back from the way they've done it in the past and look at what our real objective is, which to me, the objective, um, you know, ought to be what can this racehorse development fund do in each category to mitigate what have been the consequences of the site selections for the various other gaming opportunities in the Commonwealth, like the, the site selection at Plain Ridge was very positive to the standard breads. Um, the site selection in, in Boston was not positive to the thoroughbreds. Everyone knew that was gonna have consequences for the industry. Um, and whether you look at uh, purses and how, does it, how do we mitigate those consequences to get that money there for investors or breeding, you know, just watching the track record of what's happened because of that decision. So I think there's, there's a whole new way to look at this on both a, what I think kind of a 30,000 foot level, which I'm talking about now, but also probably on a micro level as to maybe under health and welfare, there ought to be consideration of like the number of people currently receiving money. That's not one of the now 20 categories. So I think there's a lot to, to think about here. I think public input would be very valuable and the input of you know, the fellow committee members. So m m Mr. Chairman, if, if I may, um, yeah. I, I, don't, I, I, I agree with Attorney Savage. Um, completely uh, about the timing aspect of this. So I think there's there's two there's two considerations. That's why I asked uh, uh, Mr. Grossman about the timing of a regulation change. Uh, mm -hmm. So you know, should this committee decide to move to a different approach to assessing the uh, percentages, there has to be a decision to do that. There has to be a regulation change, and then. Everything that Attorney Savage talks about, the public comment period, deciding what factors, what metrics we're going to use for each specific uh, one of the three uh, sections. Uh, we, we, we're talking just, we're all, you know, been doing this for a while. This is, this is not going to be a quick process. This is a process of, of making a major change to what our committee work, um, change regulations. Uh, public comment, it's going to be months and months and months. And I suggest it's, it's a good thing to do. It's a good thing to put on the agenda and to work. 
It's a very, very good goal to work towards for everyone's sake, uh, and most importantly, the Commonwealth's sake. However, mm -hmm. um, it would be irresponsible, I believe, of this committee to just say, yeah, yeah, we're going to change how we're going to do this now, so we'll just put everything off for another year. Um, I think, especially in light of the times that we're in, where everything is so up in the air, everyone, everyone on this planet is suffering, horsemen and the like, um, it, it's, it's important, and we can, we can do the work. We, we, Attorney Savage and I both uh, submitted proposals, submitted our position papers back in February. Um, I, I think this committee, my, my opinion, what we should do is move forward uh, quickly. And I'm not saying today, um, but within the next 30 days at the, at the, at the slowest to look at the split the way we've done it for the last eight years to address the changes from 2018 to 2019. We have, you know, I know I'm a broken record. We have all the data that the statute directs us to look at. It's the 2019 data. I think we need to apply the data. I think we need to discuss it and decide whether or not an adjustment should be made. And maybe the decision is that it shouldn't be made. I understand that. But I think we should put on our agenda uh, the, the first and foremost, the process to go ahead. This is supposed to, you know, yes, that October 4th, 14 letter that I'm looking at right now that I, that I, along with Commissioner Cameron, helped write, uh, indicates that this board would meet every October to address, to look at the, the prior, look at that year's metrics and adjust the split if necessary. That's difficult. I recognize that, but it wasn't done in October. It's now April, and the, the, the unfortunate delay is, is, was unfortunate for everyone's sake. But I think now to put this on hold again, to, to try to change the whole process, again, I believe would be irresponsible. So I think we should make that an agenda item going forward, look at the committee, look at the regulations, make those decisions, the public comment, and see what criteria should be used if we change the way we look at the split. I think at the same time, we need to go forward quickly and address the 2019 metrics and do a split as we've done for the first seven years uh, and address it one way or the other within the next 30 days. So I would say that I, I share your concerns um, around the timeline, um, just because we did as a committee sort of decide um, to set a schedule for ourselves. And I think that we've been doing our best um, to sort of hew to that schedule as best we can. So I think it might be helpful for um, Mr. Grossman to kind of walk us through what might be the most expedited timeline um, under which we could sort of undertake this work, trying to sort of balance all interests and see whether there is consensus amongst the public and the committee to take on a new approach, sort of understanding the time constraints as well. Well, uh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Cameron, did you? No, I, I was uh, digesting those comments. They were very thoughtful about, is there a way to, um, to, to understanding the timing, but yet seeing what a timeline would look like? Yeah, I mean, I think um, a timeline is somewhat subject to how quickly the committee wants to move. I don't, with the exception of the commission changing regulations, I don't think there are any time restrictions on anything. You could move as quickly or as slowly as you want, I think. I mean, the only limit is really the fact that this is not everyone's full-time job, I guess. I mean, it's my full-time job, so I can do it every day. But other people might have other things they need to take care of uh, in their lives. And certainly, I guess you want to give uh, the public enough time to think about what they want to say. So that's the one area I guess you'd want to give people some notice of um, if you're going to open the floor to public comment to give people a couple of weeks or a week or two to think about what their comments might be. But otherwise, I mean, you could schedule meetings um, in theory every week um, to knock off different items um, 
and get this moving. Uh, so I don't think it has to take a long time to do necessarily. And of course, the committee doesn't have to recommend changing the split at all from the present 65-35. You could actually do nothing. Um, and the money would still move as it, it presently does. I mean, to state the obvious, there's nothing to split right now, right? And, the, and there's no racing. So there's neither racing nor money to split. So I don't, I don't get any urgency. I mean, I, I hear the concern, but in the reality of where we are, I think we've got a little bit of time to work this through. No, because, well, God, God willing, we'll be racing in the near future. Um, you know, n no one, I don't think any of us for sure, can prognosticate whether it's going to be May 15th, June 15th, July 15th. Uh, we don't know. It could be January next year. But uh, when the casinos are going to open, and that's, I think, that's not a reason to drag our feet and delay. You know, if we change it to 100 zero, Joe, and, and, and nothing's open until January, then it, it doesn't meet the right. It has no effect. I understand that. But to not do our job because at the second, I mean, there, there wasn't, you know, there's no money coming in. I don't think is the right approach. I think we need to do our work and then, pun intended, let the chips fall where they may. And hopefully they'll be falling. But I was not saying we don't do our job. Everyone on the committee wants to do their job. But I was stating the obvious. I think we've got a little flexibility on time. I, I had, had the understanding that, that racing isn't going to begin before June 1st at the most optimistic for you guys. I, I, Dr. Lightbaum can answer that for you. That's I'm, I would have to guess that's accurate. Yeah, but that was that was the recommendation to the uh, commission that was in fact uh, adopted. So that's that's accurate. And I think from the discussion that we've just had, I think there's there's two things that are, uh, you know, open for 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 consideration. One is is, you know does there need to be any sort of uh, vote on the existing split um, you know and two is whether or not we proceed with a different consideration of the split based on the three categories so i think there are those those two things that need you know that are you know were, you know, are open for consideration. Um, so, and in addressing the public comments, uh, you know, why don't we just then um, see about scheduling a meeting, um, you know, to consider those 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 two items. So, obviously, with respect to the uh, difference of consideration, it really is something that has to be worked through and obviously it has to go through the commission to change the regulations. So, um, and from what we've heard today or what I've heard is, is obviously we need, you know, the committee members still need some more information. They want to hear from the public on it. Um, so I think what I'd like to try and do is see if we can uh, come to some sort of consensus on scheduling a meeting to at least, um, uh, you know, get some movement on 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 those two issues. So I'd like to hear from the members in terms um, of. Mr. Chair, I think what I'm hearing you say is that um, yeah. we could be specific about what we're asking for from the public meaning we could get up on our website um, specific questions. Yep. One would be the idea of, um, of the committee doing work to adopt um, uh, a new way for us to calculate the split um, and asking for comments with regard to that particular issue. And, and the second was kind of overall comments about um, you know, the usual comments about um, the overall process and what's important this year and what factors 
Is that is that what I'm hearing you say? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. I I I think in terms of you know, one is is we've we we've, we've kind of broached this this subject of whether or not there can be some some consideration as to the the breakdown of the split in accordance with the three different categories. So, right. so uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to pursue that further. Um, and as, so long as, as the other committees are, are, are so willing as well to consider to um, look at that further. Um, and uh, I think to address the concern that, that Mr. Goldberg has um, with respect to, uh, you know, whether or not with respect to the present split, does that need to be changed as of, you know, um, as of today or as of, you know, the next meeting vote? Yeah, and whether before we do our work. Yeah. Before we do the work, yes, yeah. Correct, yeah. yeah. Um, and, I, and I think the other question we could discuss is um, the form of public comments. Do we want written comments only or do we want to entertain a virtual hearing where people can notify us that they like to speak to the committee members? And um, I, I know that Dr. Lightbaum informed me that there are, she's gotten many, many calls about how do we speak to the committee members? How do we let them know how we feel about this? Um, so there seems to be some interest in, from stakeholders, uh, whether it yep. be uh, you know breeders or whether it be owners or whether it be uh, business uh, folks that would like to build a new track, I think there is. Um, and I'll let Dr. Lightbaum speak to that. But it, it just got me thinking: Do we want just written comments, or would we like to entertain a virtual hearing where we actually get to hear from people? Dr. Lightbaum, do you want to add to that? Oh, yes, like, like you said, um, I have gotten um, questions from numerous uh, different people within um, the industries asking how they can um, comment and um, what the most appropriate way is. And, um, you know, originally this um, it looked like we just were going to have um, one horseman's group um, for each breed um, and that whole thing. Um, and obviously the legislature, when they set this um, racehorse development fund up, um, weren't anticipating the situation um, that we're in now where there isn't a um, full thoroughbred meet or um, at this point a real uh, active thoroughbred racetrack. So um, there's people that have a definite interest in what happens um, at this committee um, that aren't um, necessarily on the committee. So um, there is um, interest from uh, different groups on being able to um, get their viewpoints in front of the committee. Uh, and I, I think in terms of my, my thought would be is yes, I, 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 I'd, I'd like to give uh, a further opportunity of, of public comment to hear from them. Um, at, at the last meeting, there were a number of, of representatives who um, people who attended, um, and uh, so I, I, I think we'd, we'd like to hear from them. Um, and my thoughts are with respect to, you know, I think what we could do is probably have a hybrid of, of allowing, you know, for uh, written comments um, with respect to public comments at the meeting. I think we just have to kind of establish some parameters in terms of time. Um, what we want to establish and and who who we want to um, hear from from each of the the uh, the industries. So, yeah, um, Mr. Chair, does it make sense to um, you know pretty much call it a hearing? We could have it right before our regular meeting, um, yeah. and just yeah. you know let people know they have maybe three minutes to make their comments and. Because it would have to be virtual, do we say, please let us know ahead of time if you'd yes. like to make a comment? Yep. And yep. that way we'd have a list of those. And you know, hopefully this would not take more than an hour to hear from stakeholders um, okay. because we would right. limit it to say three minutes. We at the Gaming Commission early on had many, many hearings when we were just making major decisions. And 
that's one of the techniques we used was to hold comments to say three minutes um, um, and that kept it moving and maybe if if they're from the same organization whether it be um, uh, you know one of the associations or uh, the breeders you know maybe they have one representative speaking for that organization or two representatives we could we could make that decision I'm just throwing that out there as a way to organize um, yep. such a um, just listening to people yes 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 no and I think obviously that would be very helpful um, in in terms of the time before it you know if it if uh, you know I'd like to hear from the committee members as to whether they feel an hour is appropriate or a half an hour or or I think the only pro the only problem we're going to have, of course, is if you've got 50 people that want to be heard. Yeah. You know, how do you? I, I don't know the answer to the question. How do you pick right. and choose? How do you? Yeah, you could time it three minutes. That's great, but you know, who, who, we have a lottery. People get to like you know, maybe we can raise some money for something. Well, I, I think because if they belong to the same association, I think that's how yeah. you limit it, right? If if yeah. um, you know, say there there are two different representatives for each, you know, for each of the organizations, and then maybe those who um, are you know have uh, have plans before the legislature to build a track, they get they get an opportunity to speak also um, to hear their thoughts on that. So I, you know, I think there's a way to limit limit that. I mean, is it something where we would want to pick and choose? And 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 schedule who the speakers are prior to the meeting. I I'm not sure. Well, because it's virtual, I would think. I don't know how we would be able to set it up if we didn't know who was going to speak and in which order. Dr. Lightbaum, do you have some thoughts on that? Um, we could do a combination and um, allow um, written comments. Um, it, you know, send them into the MGC comments section and then um, Shara could distribute them like she does now. Um, and that might um, help, um, a lot of people might do it that way and it would decrease the number of people who would actually want to speak. But I think it, uh, as far as allowing people to speak, uh, what uh, Commissioner Cameron suggested is a good idea, um, limit it to one or two people from um, whatever groups may want to speak. So if it's um, somebody proposing to build a track, um, maybe two people get to speak and they can each speak for three minutes. If it's, um, you know, one of the horsemen's groups, same type of deal. And um, basically the, the group itself um, could be the ones who decide who their one member or two members would be that would be um, doing the speaking so that um, the committee wouldn't necessarily get involved in that type of a discussion. Just from my perspective, I would err on the side of giving the public more time rather than less time. And I think maybe you'll have some ability to, to put it out there, see how much interest there is in speaking and then allocate from there. Um, but I, the, there's, a, how did it characterize it? There are, lively conversations in the hallway every time we meet in person and i think that hallway yes. that hallway yeah. dynamic should come on in the room and, and and get heard all right so um based based on that i'd, I'd like to hear from the committee members just uh, you know i obviously we want to try and establish some sort of parameters so um we've heard an hour a half an hour i guess you know, I'd, I'd like to hear what, you know, in terms of the, the, the time limit that we have prior to that. Um, and then from there, we can say, okay, you know, I think we, what we could do is establish the, the further parameters of how many, how many individuals during that allocated time. So. Again, from my view, I'd, I'd give them two hours and longer to speak. I think we're setting ourselves up if we really restrict people, like people are feeling unheard. And to say, all right, you got 90 seconds, you know, the, I don't know that it addresses yeah. that. So I, I'd recommend we set aside a couple hours and then see how many people want to speak and then carve it up after that. 
I mean, I, I don't necessarily disagree, except when you open the floodgates, <clears throat> yeah. you, where do you draw the line, I think, is, the, is potentially the, the issue. And, the, the, I, you know, one of the reasons I, I, why the legislature set the committee dynamic demographic as it is, is to give the Commonwealth all the stakeholders, if you will, a voice. You know, the standard bread industry, we have meetings. I, I talk to the HHANE, the Horseman's Association people regularly. I talk to the SOM, Standard Bread Owners of the Breeders, regularly. We have meetings. We invite the horsemen to come to the meetings to talk, to give their opinions. Because my thought is, that's my job. My job is not, it's not Peter Goldberg's opinion of what should happen. It's the industries, and I, you know, I assume then the thoroughbreds got got a representative, who, you know, and I'm not, I'm not saying that Attorney uh, Frasoli in the past or Attorney Savage has done anything that they've done great job in my opinion, um, but that's our job is, is to is to is our job is to speak to these people, speak to the stakeholders, speak to the the owners, the trainers, the drivers, the jockeys, get what's going and report to this committee. I'm not against public comment. It, it's fine, but I think let's not lose sight of the. the, the, the there can't be a thousand members of this committee, or 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 even 50 members of this committee. We'll get no work done, and that's why you have five member committees, not 500 member committees. Um, so I just I, I just caution everyone. You know, I, I'll sit for three hours and listen to people talk. I think at some point it becomes something yeah. that can be something. I don't want to say we're wasting anyone's time, but this is, I think it's more of my job and, and Attorney Savage's job to get the pulse, get the opinions and one out of our, of our uh, constituents, of our represent, and to present that to, to the committee. So again, I'm not saying don't do it, don't do public comment. And the written comments are great because people can write it, they feel comfortable, you can read them um, and discuss them. Uh, again, I think get into a, yeah. a hearing. I mean, are the people are going to be sworn in. Are they under oath? Are they not under oath? Do we get to question them? I mean, you know, there's all kinds of. I'm guessing yeah. the answer is no, but um, yeah. I just think I, I don't want to have a problem where someone says, "Hey, I didn't get a chance to speak." Joe, Sarah, Bill, Tom, and Al spoke, and I didn't get my three minutes. Well, I mean, we've we've done this in the past, I think, successfully. Um, me, there were many, many, many um, passionate people who had strong opinions about gaming, um, you know, as they do about racing. So I, I think I like the uh, the hybrid approach, um, written comments as well as um, some sort of a hearing. But I do think we have to limit it. And what it forces people to do is, okay, pick your representatives from your group, and B. If you know you have three minutes or five minutes, you really are thoughtful about tailoring your remarks and not repeat the same thing over and over again. So it just forces you to be a little bit better about your remarks. And it does, I think it in many ways helps people when they know, look, I have three minutes or I have five minutes to speak before this uh, committee. Um, so I, I've seen it work and work well. Um, so I do like the hybrid where we listen to people, but we do have. A time frame as well and we we are limiting it within the groups and to the amount of time and you, you try to stick to that as closely as possible right so you so theoretically you could do 10 10 thoroughbred speakers 10 standard bread speakers chosen by the industry maybe chosen by Joe and myself who each get three minutes you know that, that would be that 60 minutes or, or six minutes for two hours something is that what you're suggesting something well uh, like you that? know I think um, we all know the different organizations that are out there, whether it be, um, you know, the unions, the, uh, the associations, the, the different ones for breeders and, and you know, owners and whatnot. Uh, we know that, and in and, and Thoroughbred, there happen to be two organizations. So, um, and then of course, we do have these other stakeholders who have an interest in building tracks here in the Commonwealth. So I think we kind of know the groups out there um, and how they're selected, I think those individual uh, associations would determine who your couple of speakers are. Okay. 
So are we thinking more along the lines of an hour prior to the meeting, you know, with a half an hour allocated to each industry and, you know, up to 10 individuals who are allocated, you know, each individual allocated three minutes each? Well, just, just as a practical point, I'm not, yeah. I'm not sure, like when you start to mix new investors in with sort of legacy stakeholders, I'm not sure who's going to divide this up. You know, is that, I don't think it's going to work that, uh, you know, I can pick 10 people. Um, so well, I, I didn't think that would be, I know that Mr. Goldberg said that, but I actually thought it was better to let the association say, we have an interest in yeah. speaking or, you know, I have a proposal to build a track before the legislature. I have an interest in speaking. I agree um, with that. You know, and we take that list and, you know, uh, we'll know then um, what the public body will be that will be presenting before us. Yeah, I, I agree with that. That's, that's good. I like that approach. Okay. All right. Sounds good to me. Okay. All right. Okay, so we're talking about then. Are we talking about an hour then? I I think that's an is is about right to to hear and yeah. and don't for, and if people have more to say, they are more than welcome to put it in writing and get it to us. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So um, with that, then. Um, we need to talk about a timeline for for scheduling uh, a meeting. Um, so uh, I wanted to hear from the committee members uh, just in terms of um, scheduling the next meeting then where we would um, give the public and the industries an opportunity to provide you know further public comment. So um, can we look at our schedules in May? Um, Does the public meeting law put any restrictions on this in terms of is there a, a notice period or anything, Mr. Grossman? A 48 hours notice is I'm pretty sure what it says. So we, okay. do we do this on Monday then? <laughs> only, only if we can restrict you to three minutes. <laughs> no, no problem. I'm not, I won't even be one of the speakers. How's that? <laughs> What do we think is appropriate to let people get their comments in, um, whether they prepare for a hearing, uh, their verbal comments or their write their their writing comments? Do, I, I mean, I would think at least a couple of weeks, right? Yeah, two. Yeah, weeks. yeah, a couple of weeks prior prior to would be appropriate, um, or even to the extent of a week, but a couple of weeks would be would probably be better. So. So if we're looking at the schedule, then um, what are your thoughts on saying, okay, we'll have um, public comment available till May, uh, May 13th, um, and then uh, um, scheduling a meeting sometime during the last week of May. So we're giving them a month to um, a month to uh, get their comments together. Unless you think a lesser period of time is sufficient. So no, I, I we can take. Yeah, I'm I'm wide open for a meeting that last week of May. So. So I might encourage us to look a little bit sooner. Um, I think being respectful okay. of the public and allowing them at least two weeks. Um, yep. But if we schedule in sort of the front half of May, then I think that does give us a little flexibility if we do decide to move forward to sort of push for emergency regulations and get that done by the beginning of June, if that's the route okay. that we need to go. All right. So maybe the first or second week in May. So maybe that second week in May, the week of the 13th, that, that still gives people a month to get their comments in, but we could actually schedule the hearing and the meeting that yep. week. Yeah. Yes, yeah. 
Okay. All right. So would we say May 1st or May 8th, somewhere around there, to get the comments in? Uh, or how, about May, how, about, how about May 8th for the comments, and then the next week have the hearing, have the, our meeting? That sounds fine. That sounds fine by me. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Turns out I'm wide right. open that week, too. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. All right. So May 8th for the uh, written comments public written comments, and then we're looking at um, either May 13th or 14th. For our meeting. For yeah, our the meeting. 14th is a good date. 14th. Thursday the 14th. Yeah. Okay. So and May 14th. Do we, do we ask them, Mr. Chair, to also have the um, uh, representatives a list by the 8th so that we have the appropriate time to then uh, organize yep. our hearing before the meeting? Correct. Yep. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah. We would ask for them to provide us with a list of their representatives yep. um, that will would be speaking. And, and, and uh, Mr. Grossman, I know you're, you're here and Shara as well. Um, do we want to get on our website just those two that the chair laid out those two questions that we're really looking for comments just so they the comments can be organized does that make sense yes yep. we'll do great yeah. Yeah. so the questions so, just to be clear uh, are whether the committee should adopt the new uh, approach to the distribution and secondly what criteria or factors should be considered? Is that what everyone was thinking? Um, and I think there was a question of, do we do this year's work um, before we before we implement that, if we do implement a change in the split? Or is that, Mr. Chair, why don't you speak to that? Because you articulated it better than I am. <laughs> so yeah, so I think I think the two con open considerations were, one is, 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 you know, do we, is there any uh, consideration for an existing adjustment based on the parameters that we have right now? So is there, you know, would there be uh, an adjustment of the split at this time based on the position papers that were submitted for 2019 and the public comments that we then have received thus far and the ones that we um, most likely will receive by May 8th. And then the second consideration is related to the, you know, uh, distribution of the actual categories of uh, the, 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 the split itself as to whether or not the split could be um, divided between each of the three separate categories that we, we consider for distribution. So, so does that mean that we'll have an agenda item on May 14th about considering, first considering an adjusted split and then talking about the change of process? Correct, yeah, yes, yeah. And I think at that point in time, we would take a vote of the committee to whether we proceed in that direction, so. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair, are we talking about maybe a 10 o'clock um, hearing followed by an 11 o'clock meeting? Yes. That's exactly what I was thinking. 10 o'clock for the public comment, and then 11 o'clock we'd start the meeting. If that works with everyone else's timeline. Yes. Okay. All right, so uh, with that in mind, then do I, um, do we want to entertain a motion to schedule the meeting then for um, uh, May 13th, or oh. May 14th, sorry, what? <laughs> I'm sorry. So that, I move but, that we, yeah. you want a motion for that, Mr. Chair? Sure. 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 So I move that we um, 
we uh, conduct a public hearing where we're, we will hear um, virtually, where we will hear comment from the public um, at 10 o'clock on the 14th, followed by our um, meeting, our next meeting with this committee at 11 o'clock. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Oh, let me, sorry, excuse me. Let me run through the roll call. Ms. Katana? Yes. Mr. Goldberg? Yes, sir. Mr. Savage? Yes. Commissioner Cameron? Yes. And Fitzgerald? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. So, um, are there any other items I called to the committee? Are there any other items that they uh, feel need any further further discussion at this time? But just just to be clear, um, Mr. Chairman, yeah. so the the first agenda item on the fourteenth will be our discussion of potentially, or at least a discussion of an adjustment of the current split based on our position papers and the metrics from the past. Correct, correct, okay. yeah. Then the change, okay, thank you. Okay, all right. Uh, do I have a motion seeing, is there, are there any other, are there any other comments at this time? From anyone else? No. All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I'll move so to moved. adjourn the meeting. Second. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. Ms. Katonic? Yes. Mr. Goldberg? Mr. Goldberg? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Mr. No. Savage? Yes. And Commissioner Cameron? Yes. Yes. And Fitzgerald? Yes. So thank you all. I appreciate everyone, uh, everyone's participation. And thank you to uh, Shara Bedard and thank you to Todd Grossman for, for all, your, all your hard work. And thank you, Tanya, for taking the minutes. So, all right. Thanks, everybody. Can we agree on a dress thank code you. for the next meeting? Can we agree on a dress code for the next meeting? <laughs> you are all sorry. appropriate. I'll skip the tie next time. All right. All right. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Thank right. you. Thank you, everyone. Right. Thanks a lot. Thank Thanks. Thanks. Bye now. Bye bye.